Through my family and training, I have found a personal intimacy with using fabrics and paper in my work. I was raised in Rhode Island, where my French-Canadian ancestors immigrated to work in the textile mills during the Industrial Revolution. They worked long, hard hours, often at young ages, towards the dream that someday their children and grandchildren might prosper. It is with the utmost gratitude and respect that I dedicate my work to them. Although I consider myself a painter more than a seamstress or a quilt maker, I begin all the paintings with fabric and paper collage, arranged, sewn, and adhered to wood panels with an almost quilt-like appearance. They consist of antique cloth, burlap and cotton bags, linen towels and tablecloths, contemporary fabrics, cottons, velvets, and polyesters, and a variety of papers and 2D found objects. From this point, my work splits into two series. The series of abstracts are collages of materials transformed and embellished using fiber, tints, and glazes. Through the design, colors, and composition, my intention is to convey the poetry of painting with the use of fiber in a feminine and tactile tone. The paintings are renderings of faces and figures in which I use acrylics and charcoal to capture emotions, moods, and ideas. My intention here is to create a visual record of personal experiences in a more literal fashion than the abstracts. The collaged and embellished surface adds a visual static and dimension to the composition. The joy in this process is from the instinctual choices of what I will cover up and what I will leave to be revealed. The development of my style began years ago as retaliation against the fear of a blank white canvas. I started by building a textured surface. I used modeling paste, joint compounds, sawdust, and concrete. I also applied my skills of scenic, mural, faux finish, and sign painting. I began working on wood panels because of the weight of the materials and started using palette knives to apply the paint. I realized that flat pieces of burlap glued to the wood panels created a fabulous surface and the bags had fantastic logos, words, and colors. I made the signage of the sacks part of the design and composition. I was painting crop scenes of old buildings and walls that had layers of old paint and signage on them. Figures began appearing in these scenes and with the change of subject matter, my painting style also evolved. I began using cotton bags and heavy linens in my collages, which allowed for a more complex drawing and a refining of the way I applied the paint. I also began referring to my work as painting on fabric collage. Eventually, the scenes became unimportant and the figures became the focus. Gradually, I moved the viewer closer and closer to the figure and face until they became landscapes of anatomy. It has never mattered to me who I paint. I'm not a portrait painter, yet I am in love with painting expression through eyes or gestures. All the figures have pieces of self-portrait in them, and at the same time, they are no one in particular. I make them up. The influence of Frida Kahlo's work presents itself with the appearance of my eyebrows in some of the figurative pieces, but my concern is the impression, not the history of the person with the emotion. A good example of this is the painting Present Moment. Present Moment was the first painting I did after September 11th. I tried to create a face that encompassed and contained all races, all religions, and all features. One of the reasons I love Georgia O'Keeffe is that she said she painted flowers large and cropped because it forced people to look at them, to pay attention to them, to really see them. I love painting faces and eyes this way as well. Eyes truly are the windows to the soul. One of the very first things we learn as babies is to identify familiar faces with eye contact. It's so instinctual. It's my belief that figurative painting has resurfaced in modern art because people need to identify with each other in this way. In a moment that proved too important to be coincidence, I began painting faces in multiple parts. I had cropped one of my photos down to the left eye when I realized the right eye in my photo was an equally great composition. So I painted two separate paintings, placing them together only after they were finished. I was so intrigued with the results that I continued painting the other two quadrants of that face. 
I proceeded to do a series of these type paintings, including six part and eight part pieces. Each piece of the painting was painted and conceived individually, with its own palette, texture, composition, and design. Much like Chuck Close, I had found my own way to break apart the human face. Recently, my palette has become more subtle, less primary colors, and the application of the paint has become more translucent. I have been concentrating more on the fabrics and papers in the collages and on the drawing quality of the work. My palette knife style of painting has been replaced with softer glazing applications. I also have backed away from the face and have started re-examining the figure, circling back to a place I've been six years ago. I have also come full circle with my love for fiber arts, influenced by designs such as the quilts of G's Ben and Mark Rothko's paintings. My paintings have developed into a whole new series of abstracts. I'm becoming more interested with the interplay of sheer mediums on a 2D surface. I continue to adhere all my fabrics and papers to wood panels and let the glues, rather than light, determine what will be exposed to the viewer. I believe that art is the result of artists and their society either exercising their demons or glorifying their divinity. Poet William Blake wrote, My words are mine and yet not mine. I feel like that when I step away from a painting and I realize that the painting passed through me and not necessarily from me. That is my goal when I work, to make things that channel my spirit and to reflect my place in this world. I have always known that I need to create, whether it be painting, drawing, or working with fiber. And I believe completely in the abundant power and unlimited creative potential that is our divinity.